I'm Emily Baudet. I'm a paleoanthropologist from the University of Cambridge in the UK, and I'm also affiliated to the University of the Witwatersrand as a researcher. And today I'm really happy to have the opportunity to speak a bit about our study of the bony labyrinth of Littlefoot. So what is the bony labyrinth? So the bony labyrinth is what we call the inner ear, which means that this is an organ that is involved in uh, then our mobility, so the way we move, but also in our capacity of hearing some uh, some what frequencies. And so that's why the inner ear is so interesting for us when we try to reconstruct human evolution and to learn more about our ancestors. Because with the inner ear, we can learn something about how they moved in the environment and also the kind of frequencies they could hear. The problem is that the inner ear cannot be seen from the outside of the skull. So it is uh, located inside the uh, temporal bone. And to get access to it, we need to use some imaging techniques. So that this is the reason why we scan the, the skull of little foot using the uh, micro -CT, CT scanner that is um, available at the Evolutionary Studies Institute of the University of the Witwatersrand. So the images that we could get from that scanner, they were uh, very of very high quality and uh, their thickness was um, like 88 microns, which is uh, very, very then tiny. And this is the reason why we could see the inner ear and we could reconstruct it. So by using these images, then we were able to reconstruct in 3D the inner ear of Littlefoot that you can see here on the screen. So the inner ear is made of two different uh, components. So the, the first component is the semicircular canal. So this is the three uh, then canals that you can see here. We have the anterior one, the posterior one, and the lateral one. And the second component is the cochlea. So the cochlea is related to the, the way we hear some frequencies, while the semicircular canals, they are more involved in the uh, locomotion, so the mobility of the, uh, the head. So we wanted to uh, see how the, the, little, the inner ear of little foot um, could differ from uh, other osteopathic specimens, but also other fossil species from our family tree. And um, this is the reason why we uh, decided to quantify this shape and to compare it uh, with uh, than other species. And for this, we use a technique that is known as the geometric morphometrix. And we use some landmarks that you can see here in yellow so that it could kind of reflect the shape of the inner ear and we could quantify it. So first we, we use that method to quantify the, the shape variation using the, the, the entire inner ear. So what could we see? So we could see that the, um, then the inner ear of little foot seems to be similar to the, the one of uh, other Australopithecus specimens, but it's, it seems to be uh, much closer in particular to one specimen, which is the, the Jakovec um, specimen, so Jakovec cranium, that was found at Stairfontein, so the same locality as uh, Littlefoot, but in some deposits that are potentially uh, well older or at least at the same age. And the two, well, the inner ears from the two specimens look very similar. So that was very interesting for us. The second thing that we can see is that the, the variation for Australopithecus, so this is uh, what we can see here in purple within the plot, then seems to be quite important. So it means that we have a very important variation within uh, the Australopithecus, Southern African Australopithecus at that time. And uh, the other thing that we could see is that these um, specimens, they uh, seem to, to, to differ or to be closer because of some um, similarities or differences located in the uh, cochlea, because then if we look at how this inner ear can vary, we can see here that we red values, which means that we have a lot of differences located here, and also in some semicircular canal that we can see here. So that's why we decided then to investigate these two different well, parts of the inner ear separately. And also because we know that semicircular canals can tell us something about the mobility, why the cochlea is more related to the hearing system. So when we look at the semicircular canals, what we can say is that the uh, little foot uh, then is um, still similar to some other osteopathic specimens, but that uh, some of them, so this group is um, seems to be very um, similar to the inner ear or the semicircular canals that we can see in uh, extant chimpanzees and bonobos, so it means the our closest living relatives. And that's, this is interesting because it means that, of course, these uh, Australopithecus specimens and little foot could work 
upright on the ground, but they were probably also able to climb the trees and to spend some time on the trees, just like the uh, extinct chimpanzees. So that's the first thing we could say about the semicircular canals. Then if we look at the cochlea, uh, the signal is, is a bit more complex to uh, then interpret, but at least what we can say is that the cochlea of little foot seems to be very similar to the other Australopithecus specimens, and that potentially that would mean that the, the way they could hear was quite the same. But it's very different from what we can see in uh, other specimens, and more particularly the, the parenthropus specimen, which is a group that was living at the same time as the uh, earliest humans. 